This video is not a basic run through of the avatar editor. Chloe already has a video on that and I'll link it in the video description. The reason for this video is that I've learned over the years the limitations of the avatar editor and I want to share my tips for how to be most successful in this process. Close team responds very well to user needs and improving the software, so if you find this video useful, please like it so that Clo can see the need to improve the avatar editor. First, let's go over your options when sizing a Clo avatar. In each avatar folder, there's a size folder. This contains pre-made size specs based on some of the US ASTM size ranges. When talking about the avatar editor, my very first suggestion to you is that you start with a size that's as close as possible to the size you're trying to achieve. The editor works best with small incremental changes rather than massive jumps. To use these, all you have to do is double click to import the avatar and double click the size that you want and the avatar will change to that size. One of the main limitations of the Clo avatar editor is in editing lengths or heights. That means adjusting center front and center back neck to waist, as well as high and low hip height, will only cause you issues. They don't work properly, and they will distort your avatar. In order to avoid adjusting the heights that distort the avatar, we're going to mark out where our real measurements should be, so that as we edit the Clo markings, we know what our markings are. In my avatar measuring tools, I'm going to press and hold and select the basic tape measure. The waist on my fit model is actually about one inch lower than the Clo waist marking. So I'm going to click on the Clo waist marking and hold shift and go down about an inch. Then I'll double click to set my marking. You just have to get as close as you can with these measuring tools because there's no way to be precise here. Then I grab my basic circumference measuring tool. The reason I use basic instead of surface is that the surface circumference will measure along the curves of the avatar. I just want it to wrap around the widest points like when I'm measuring a real person. So at the bottom of my one inch marking, I'm going to click once to place my circumference measurement. Hold shift and go just a short distance over and click a second time. Then I'll hit my six key to get the side view of my avatar. And you can either hold shift to make the tape go straight across, or you can try to visually match the angle of close waist measurement. Then you just click a third time to set the marking in place. You can see I've also done the same for my low hip measurement. The high hip is more arbitrary than the waist or low hip, so I think the best thing to do is just measure your fit model or your form where the clo marking is and just make them match. If you're not happy with the shape of the avatar after you do that, you can adjust the measurement until you think the shape looks like your form, then measure to see how they compare. Just recently I'm playing with whether or not the bust marking should be straight across or at the angle that clo has it. I found that clo's marking is about half an inch larger than mine, which makes me wonder if my bust is actually half an inch too small. I want to be really careful that things aren't too tight, so I'd rather my measurements err slightly on the large side than the small side. So I might try following this new marking to be safe. That means I would actually increase the Clo bust measurement until my marking meets my spec. First things first, you must, must start by entering the height of your avatar. I suggest editing avatars without any shoes on, just so you have the proper visual of inseam and all the heights to the floor. The reason you have to set the height first is that if you change the height, it can affect all the other measurements. So you'll need to go back through and check everything again if you do that. The second measurement you must enter is the bust or under bust for female avatars and the chest for male avatars. This anchors the avatar's circumference, like the height. If you change this later, it'll affect everything else. So absolutely do this second after you enter the height. For the female avatars, I highly recommend you set this drop down to under bust, as it's a better anchor point to have and allows you to freely adjust the bust and play with that number. The under bust measurement has less flex and room for error, so you shouldn't need to adjust it later. From here, I suggest you go in order from the top down on the avatar's body, which is basically top down on the left column and then from the top down on the right column. The basic option is exactly what it says. It's essentially for when you're working from a limited number of measurements. I will say if you want to start with the basic avatar and then move on to advanced, you should save out your specs here in the top right before you make further edits. 
That way, if editing more specs distorts your avatar, you can get back to the basic one you made and start from there without having to start over completely. And it will save as an AVS file. This is like the size folders in the library. You can open any avatar of the same version and then go to this folder icon and open your AVS file and it will apply the specs to the avatar. Let's get to the advanced options. I recommend you ultimately use these because the basic one is missing things like elbow, wrist, calf, ankle, all of which are pretty important. The two advanced options in the drop down menu are human body and dress form. This does not mean that your avatar is gonna look more like a dress form or a body. This is related to how the measurements are taken. On a dress form, the height measurements are usually done to the floor, at least the measurements provided by Alvanon, which is what Chloe based this chart on. The human body option has height measurements like you would normally do them when measuring a person. So the waist is done from center front and center back neck, the hip is down from the waist. However, as we've been over so far, changing these heights in Chloe is a real disaster, so why would it matter which one you choose? I'll say I recommend using the dress form one for one reason. It has shoulder drop or shoulder slope, which is pretty critical, especially in menswear. The other measurements it has that the human body doesn't are related to heights. It has knee and thigh height, and knee height is actually changeable without causing any issues, so that's a plus. It also has vertical trunk, which is when you put the tape measure at HPS and run it down the front under the crotch and back up to HPS at the back. This is really useful for jumpsuits. I don't suggest editing this measurement like all the other heights, but at least Clo gives you a reference for it in the dress form setting, and you can make sure that if your model is a bit different, you're aware of that for patterning. Now I'll go through any of the measurements that should have a disclaimer, beginning with the neck circumference. Neck circumference is really tricky to mark in Clo, which is why the Clo marking looks a bit odd. They are effectively trying to mark the correct front and back neck drops and hit HPS to give you the marking. But in real life, when you measure the neck, you wrap the tape around the lowest point of the neck, and it's really hard to get this low with a rigid plastic tape measure. So if the measurement is normally taken from a bit higher on the body, that means the Clo marking would need to be a bit larger than your spec until it's the correct size at the point where you would measure a real person like I've marked here. A cross shoulder in Clo is pretty accurate. I usually just enter my exact measurement here, partly because this is one of the hardest measurements to take on a human body, and we tend to rely on a standard here anyway. Shoulder drop or shoulder slope, as I mentioned in the previous section, is only available in the dress form chart. I recommend using it because it can be really crucial to the hang of a garment, and I found in adjusting my male avatar, the shoulder slope got really square. My recommendation here is that you increase it incrementally with the arrows and assess along the way. This isn't something easily measured in real life, so use pattern measurements for reference, but if it starts to look really weird on the avatar, don't try to match the pattern exactly. We already spoke about bust. It's up to you if you decide you want to follow a marking that's straight across or use the clo marking. Now you can skip down to the waist. Here you're going to adjust the clo measurement while checking the marking that you made to make sure that's okay. And remember our bodies have variation when we breathe and just exist. So if they're very similar, you may as well have the clo one match your spec. I mostly want to make sure that my marking isn't too small. We'll do the same thing for the hip. Remember with the high hip, just measure your form or model at the location of the close spec and enter that in. Don't worry about wherever you normally take this measurement from. For the low hip, you wanna pay attention to your marking. Because the clo hip marking is quite low, my marking is a bit higher. In order to make my marking meet my spec, the clo marking is always going to be larger because they deem that the largest point of the bum. Visually though, I think it would actually be smaller as you go down here. Either way, what this means is that sometimes things can read tight on my avatar down near the upper thigh low hip marking. It's your call if you wanna make this number meet your spec and have your your marking be a bit under spec. So far I've focused on my marking and not worried about the clo marking being a tiny bit big. Even though inseam is a pretty crucial measurement in garments, changing it too much will distort your avatar. First of all, note that the inseam is taken from the crotch point to the floor. 
So the number is going to be longer than where you would actually measure someone's inseam. If you want to check, I suggest using the linear measure tool and drawing a line a reasonable amount below the crotch point down to the ankle bone. Because in reality, we're not sticking the tape measure all the way up into the crotch of a person. So keep that in mind before you change the spec too much. I personally think it's best to focus on hitting the desired inseam measurement on your pant pattern. And if you're having huge discrepancies in the visual, then you can adjust further. Thigh, knee, calf, and ankle are all pretty straightforward, and I found that you can adjust knee height if you like without any issues. Arm length is another tricky measurement that affects a lot of other things in Clo, so edit this one with caution. In the dress form dropdown, you have the arm measurement as well as center back neck to wrist. Center back neck to wrist is the standard way to measure in tailoring and menswear, and to be honest, I've always used this for women's as well. The benefit to using it is that it's a constant measurement that doesn't change depending on where your shoulder seam sits. Center back neck to wrist will equal this measurement here at the top shoulder plus your arm length. So the key here is to make sure that these three measurements all jive together. If they don't, you can get some very weird shaping at the upper back and shoulders. You can't actually adjust this measurement here across the top of the shoulder, but it will be changed as you adjust your across shoulder. So just remember that you need to adjust these three measurements in tandem. Bicep, elbow, and wrist are straightforward. However, I think a more useful measurement than elbow, especially for men, is forearm. Our forearms are a muscle and our elbow is bone. So there's much more variation in the forearm and much more of a chance the sleeve will be tight there. So I recommend measuring your model's forearm and making sure you hit that spec by changing the elbow marking. The rise measurements I would use for a reference in the real world, but I wouldn't do any editing here. Instead, I would do some real life fitting comparisons with Clo so that you know going forward if the rises are correct. Once you're happy enough with the size of your avatar, you want to save the AVS size spec here as I mentioned earlier. Click the floppy disk icon to save it, and if you ever want to apply these specs to another avatar, you can open them here with this folder icon. And then do a file save as avatar. This will save the avatar as you see it here with the size applied and also with any markings you've added. Now you can continue to edit this as needed and save out new versions in case you need to come back to this one.